Hello, everyone, and good morning or good afternoon or good evening, depending on where in the world you are joining us from today. So glad that you could be here. I want to review a few housekeeping items before we get today's presentation started. Um, this presentation is being recorded for those that weren't able to attend live. So in light of that, we encourage you to uh, help us to mitigate distractions and ensure a pleasant experience. So keep your microphone on mute and your video turned off. Um, please feel free as we go along to type your questions in the chat. We may be waiting for subsequent, subsequent slides to get to those questions, but we do have time at the end reserved specifically to answer any questions that you may have. So please feel free throughout the presentation to go ahead and type those in the chat so you don't forget them. This is a very exciting day for us, part one of our virtual open house series. The reason that we have put together this open house series is that we understand as you're considering graduate school, whether it's a doctoral program, a master's program, or a graduate level certificate, you have a lot of questions. There's a lot of information that you need, um, a lot of resources that you'll be looking for. And we want to ensure that you have a venue each of the weeks as we lead up to the application deadline for those of you who are considering a potential fall enrollment that you have the space to get this information that you need and to get to know us as a university. And that's what today's presentation is all about. We're starting with all about fielding because when you commit to a program, it's not just the program that you are a part of, it's a part of the university and the system and the culture and the community that's so important. And we want you to have the opportunity to learn about that and to feel uh, to, to get a feel for the people here and the culture here and, and understand if it's the right fit for you or not. You'll hear me talk a lot in these, these different venues about finding the right fit. So that's really what today's presentation is, is based on. Our motto is change the world, start with yours. We're hoping that you walk away today with a greater understanding of what that means to us and who we are. And although this presentation is all about fielding, as you will see from the presentations and the presenters that we have here today, your education and experience is all about you. My name is Erica Fichter. I serve as Director of Recruitment and Admission at Fielding Graduate University. I have been in higher education and graduate admission specifically for about a decade now, although I've been with Fielding for um, just nearing two and a half years. And I truly love what I do. And someone once asked me what my favorite part of recruitment was. And I realized that it's hearing the stories of our prospective students and our applicants and understanding where you've been and what your goals are and your dreams are. And I see our part as helping to connect you with those, those big dreams and the changes that you wanna make in the future. So I'm very passionate about what I do. Um, it means a lot to me. So I appreciate you being here and now I'm going to turn it over and allow my co-host to, uh, to introduce themselves, starting with Dr. Lindsay Kahn. Hi, everyone. I'm, I'm Lindsay Kahn. Uh, I've been with Fielding for 10 years now, and I worked in higher education at other schools for more years before that than I'd like to admit. <laughs> um, but I also recently finished my EDD uh, through an, an online blended program like we offer here. And so I have real world experience of what it's like to work full time and complete a doctoral degree. Um, so I hope that I'll be able to give you some insight into that process. And I'm really excited to work, to work with you. And Hillary, would you introduce yourself? Absolutely. Hello, everyone. My name is Hillary Molina. And I'm the Director of Alumni Relations here at Fielding. I am celebrating nine years in a couple of months. And I, just like Erica and Lindsay, just truly enjoy uh, the work that I do. Uh, it's enjoyable for me, especially because I get to start working with students early on. And then when you graduate, I get to continue to work with you and share uh, Fielding even after you graduate. And I have a lot more to um, more information to provide you in this presentation, but I'm very glad to be here today. Thank you both. And I just want to take a moment and point out the reason why I put together this particular panel for today's presentation 
I thought it was important for you that are considering fielding to have a true understanding of the support that you have and the culture of the units that you would be working with before you start the program through the application process with admissions, as a student working with the advising office, um, and as a student working with alumni relations, um, but definitely after graduation and what that network looks like. So really the full life cycle of your journey. Um, so that is why we have these particular panelists here today. So I thank you to my colleagues for, for joining. Okay, moving on to our agenda. As the title notes, we're gonna be talking about fielding. Uh, I'll provide a brief overview of the different programs that we offer for those of you who may not be completely familiar with that. Um, Lindsay is going to talk about our distributed learning environment and the support services that you have as a student. And then of course, our wonderful Hillary Molina will talk about alumni relations and, and what that looks like for you during and after your program. And then as I mentioned at the end, we'll have time for Q&A. So getting us started today, as I mentioned, considering a program in a school is, is extremely important in ensuring that you find the right fit. The culture and the community is going to shape every aspect of your experience and your network during your academic career and long after graduation. So I want to start with the history of fielding. Uh, we started in 1974 in Santa Barbara, California, where our administrative offices still are today. And the reason we were founded is that the, the founders were realizing that there was a lack of access to education, specifically a doctoral education, and at that time, specifically within the area of clinical psychology. And they also saw that there was limited access to that level of education for women in particular. And then they realized that learning did not have to take place within the confines of four walls. So long before the proliferation of the internet, we were founded on a distributed learning environment where our students and our faculty are dispersed around the US and really around the world and able to join together in their local communities to do the work that matters to them and is impactful to them. And over the years, we have added in many other programs, doctoral programs, masters and others, um, but we remain today a distributed learning environment, allowing our students to have um, sort of the best of both worlds where they have the flexibility of virtual learning, but also a very close knit learning community. And today we remain an accredited nonprofit leader in graduate education, as I mentioned, combining face-to-face -face when it's safe to do so, uh, learning and online learning. And our values continue to include community, diversity, learner-centered learner education, and social justice. And on the screen here, I have a lovely picture of our current president, Dr. Katrina Rogers. Moving on to the schools and the programs that we offer, uh, we have a school of psychology at Fielding, as well as a school of leadership studies. And just a brief introduction to the, to the leadership of the School of Psychology. This is Dr. Christine Jacquin, the Dean of the School of Psychology, uh, and Dr. Barbara Meek, the Dean of the School of Leadership Studies. Uh, both of them are decades long scholar practitioners that not only have extensive experience in their areas, uh, but also an extensive academic background as well. Within our School of Psychology, we offer doctoral degrees and a PhD in clinical psychology, uh, which is actually the only APA accredited PhD in clinical psychology that is offered in a distributed environment. We offer a PhD, master's and certificate in media psychology, uh, which is a very interesting but highly relevant field, whether you're interested in social justice or business and marketing or communications or virtual reality. We have a PhD in infant and early childhood development that has a specific emphasis in, in infant mental health. We have certificates in uh, the post baccalaureate certificate in clinical psychology for those who are looking to be competitive candidates for PhDs in clinical psychology, a re specialization certificate in clinical psychology, and a neuropsychology specialization training program. Within our School of Leadership Studies, we have an EDD, Leadership for Change, PhDs in both human development and organizational development and change, 
And for those of you who may already have some earned doctoral credit, we also have a PhD degree completion program. We are very excited this summer to be launching our revised master's degree in organization development and leadership. And we have certificate in evidence-based coaching. All of these programs offer individual information sessions. Um, so if you're interested in learning more, we can send you a link to the calendar and sign up for information sessions specific to each of these programs. Now that I've provided a little bit of an overview of our history and who we are and the programs that we offer, I'm going to turn it over to my colleague, Lindsay, to talk about your experience as a student. Thank you, Erica. I'm so excited to share more information about what it's like to be a fielding student. Um, just a note, I'm gonna speak really generally because it varies which program you're in, exactly what things look like, but um, you'll find out more about the specific program at those info sessions Erica was talking about. Um, so Erica, you can go to the next slide, yes. So most of our programs are blended, as Erica said, bringing the best of in-person and virtual learning together. Um, again, whether there's any in-person attendance required varies by program. Some programs like the clinical and media psychology PhD programs do require in-person attendance at our national sessions. Other doctoral programs have optional attendance at national sessions. And our national sessions are when we take over a hotel for a week. And like you can see in this picture, we set up their meeting rooms into classrooms and we hold meetings, seminars, lectures, and film screenings, and even hold a formal graduation ceremony. Um, being in person is a great way to get to know your fellow students and faculty better, to grab a meal or a glass of wine together, discuss your dissertation project or your research interests, you can also meet one on one with your graduate program advisor, your dissertation committee or a financial aid advisor to discuss your progress and any questions and concerns that you might have. Uh, we hold our national sessions in places that are easy to get to and centrally located. Uh, our winter session held every January when we're not under pandemic conditions um, is here in our home base of Santa Barbara. And a hot tip, Santa Barbara is beautiful in January, so people love to come for a winter session. Um, for the past few years, pre-pandemic, our summer session in July has been held near Chicago. Prior to Chicago, we held sessions in Washington, D.C. and Kansas City, Missouri. Um, and in the fall session, which is smaller and only for clinical students, it's in November and it's been held near, near Baltimore for the past couple of years, but that location can vary. Um, all of our programs use Zoom to meet face-to-face -face virtually. Um, some classes have weekly Zoom meetings, some meet less frequently, um, but you as a student will have a Zoom account of your own so that you can schedule your own meetings and, and hold, um, hold your own meetings. You'll also get a fielding email account that's powered by Google, which means you'll also have access to all of the Google Drive um, storage and Google Suite tools, which makes it really easy to share files and collaborate with other fielding students. Um, our learning and collaboration spaces are held on Moodle. Um, Moodle's where the course information will be, where you'll upload assignments and view course materials. Many classes have discussion forums within the course space on Moodle, so where you can discuss readings and course topics with other students, ask questions, um, and, and dialogue about your courses. Um, our online library is also located in Moodle, where you'll have access to hundreds of thousands of journal articles, as well as research databases and some full textbooks. I have to say our librarians are fantastic and they do their best to have the most relevant material available to you for free. Um, but they're also an invaluable resource to help with your research and finding what you need for your studies. Um, and then finally, the students have access to real time information about their student record through Web Advisor self service. Um, that gives you 24 seven access to your grades and your transcript, your financial aid paperwork, your student account statements, um, and various different self-service type options. And then next slide, please, Erica. 
Um, finally, outside of your official coursework, um, there's community engagement. You will have, we know that as a student, your engagement with the university doesn't need to end just with your coursework. And so we have a lot of opportunities to engage with your fellow students and with the university. Um, one way is through participation in student governance. Different programs have different opportunities to represent the student body in a student leadership position. Um, but there are also program specific and university wide committees and working groups that you can join. Um, an example would be we have a diversity, equity and inclusion council that has some student members and we have a sustainability advisory council. There are also student and faculty led special interest groups like the Black Student Association. Um, there's a group of students who are caregivers uh, slash parents, and so they have a group to support each other. Um, and there are some LGBTQ plus type support um, groups, and you can start a new group if you have an idea for one that, that you think is good. Um, both schools lead colloquium series where faculty and guest speakers present on topics that are relevant to their research interests and that you'll find interesting. Um, there are also town hall and community meetings where program leaders can talk about program changes and issues and students can ask questions and share their concerns. And then in the School of Psychology, there are opportunities to join honor societies like Psychi, which is the International Honor Society in Psychology. Um, and then Hillary can tell you even more about events that and opportunities that she leads as part of the Alumni Network. Thank you so much, Lindsay. I really appreciate that and uh, that wonderful overview of the engagement opportunities here. Now we are going to turn it over to Hillary. Take it away. All right, thank you. Uh, for those of you who just joined, um, again, my name is Hillary Molina and I'm the Director of Alumni Relations here. And it's a pleasure for me to share with you what life looks like after you graduate. Here at Fielding, we invite students to become members of the Alumni Association just as you begin the program. We really want you to join the over 6,000 alumni across the globe in 56 countries, get connected ahead of time. You are invited to become a member of this incredible lifelong fielding community before you graduate so that when you continue after a student, you already have your network set in place. So first, what I'd like to do is share with you some of the benefits you can expect to take advantage of when you graduate. And for those of you who enjoy multitasking, please feel free to jump on to alumni.fielding.edu just to take a look at some of the services that we have to offer. So what you can expect when you graduate is number one, you automatically become a lifelong member of the Alumni Association for free. And the beauty of joining this though as a student is that you'll have a seamless transition from student to graduate and you'll stay connected not only to the field and community, but still with the students and the faculty and the staff. A couple of benefits I think are really important to share with you is the alumni library. We have an incredible alumni library that's included with your complimentary membership. Many of the databases that you used to using while you're a student will still be available. And we do offer a couple of memberships that you can upgrade for extended library access. You get to keep your fielding email, which becomes a benefit for a variety of reasons to stay connected, not only to fielding, but they always have discounts on things um, um, that is helpful when you have a .edu email. And you also get to keep your pro Zoom account, which is very helpful after you graduate to continue your work. We also offer some discounts, worldwide discounts, such as on hotels and cars, kind of some of those, um, the basic benefits. Uh, we also have a job board that you'll have access to. And more importantly, the next slide is the alumni directory. And this is really why you wanna join um, right away, is as a member of the alumni association, as a student, you will have extensive access to a database of all active alumni, students, faculty, and staff. And my favorite part of this site, and for those of you who might be multitasking right now and taking a look at the site, is there is a dynamic map that um, you can zoom into. And, and let's say that you're traveling somewhere and you want to meet up so, with some fielding alumni, as you can find out across the globe um, where folks are located. 
and you can even drill down a little bit more. You can filter by program, the year someone graduated, um, by location. You can also search by interest. And this is what's really valuable for you as a student is if you're interested in sustainability, leadership, early childhood education, media psychology, uh, all of the alums that are active will indicate their areas of interest and you'll be able to find them in this database. And uh, as, a, as a student, this is an excellent networking tool. On the alumni profile, they indicate if they're interested by being contacted by students. So you'll know who would like to talk to you about what, what your interests are. And there's also a great uh, quick links option to show you those automatically that have similar interests to you that you put on your profile, as well as alumni that you're in, in uh, what city you're in. So just remember networking now as a student creates a stronger network in the future. And my goal and what I wanna do is get you connected as a student to, to really create that community for, for the rest of your life. And then another thing I'd like to share is um, about our events. I work really closely with the academic programming. And last year during the pandemic, we were able to offer over 120 events to alumni and keep them connected with students. And our, our community is so incredibly connected that we can continue your connection as an alum to many of the student offerings. Faculty and students really enjoy having alumni as a part of their, their education. And as an alum, you'll be able to stay connected. And as a student, you also have the benefit of learning from alumni. And on the events page, um, if you're on that site right now, you can take a look at everything that's available. Um, I was also wanted to share that we had an alumni conference this year. We had over 80 presenters from 34 countries across the globe. We had 400 people attend, students, faculty, staff, and guests. So always working to make sure to keep you connected across the university. And then on our next slide, um, I wanted to talk a little bit more about uh, the ways that you can stay engaged. And this is going back a bit to what Lindsay was talking about of the ways that you engage as a student, you can also engage in as an alum. For example, again, the Sustainability Working Group, we have a Diversity and Inclusion Council. We offer continued education. We also have uh, the Fielding University Press. Quite a few alumni and students and faculty work together on producing these incredible monographs. And if you go to the Fielding website and look at under publications, you can take a look at what, what includes uh, is included there. And with our winter and summer sessions, as a student, you attend, you're also invited as an alum to come back to your fielding um, community. And here in Santa Barbara, we call it coming back to campus when uh, we, we do take over the hotel, like Lindsay was talking about. Santa Barbara is a fantastic place to, to come visit. So we, we look forward to having you there. And then lastly, we have uh, really just want to stay right now, get involved. On your first day as a student, invite you to join the Alumni Association. Um, hopefully look forward to seeing uh, many of you. And thank you so much for uh, letting me join in here, Erica. I appreciate it. Wonderful. Thank you so much, Hillary. Appreciate that excellent overview of all the great work being done in your office and around the world. So before we wrap up with some of the events coming up, I just wanted to say thank you for attending. Um, really, it's all about finding the right fit. And that's in terms of the culture, the people, the modality, the interactions, the events, everything about the university. So we really hope that you are walking away today with a better understanding of who we are and whether or not we might be the right fit for you. And last, before we open it up to questions, I wanted to give an overview of the remainder of the events happening within our open house series. Next week will be part two, application tips, where we will not only review the different aspects of the application, but actually talk through what the committee is thinking about as they look at the different pieces of your application. So that you can walk away feeling very confident about submitting the most competitive application that you can. Part three, the next week, everybody's favorite topic, funding your education. We will have a member of our financial aid team talk through your options. 
and what scholarships and what uh, loan options that you have. Uh, so hopefully you can join us for that on June 22nd. Part four is my personal favorite. Excited, scared, prepared. We have an honest conversation about the things that you're looking forward to, the things that you may be, you know, having some concerns about, having some anxieties about, you know, whether you're dealing with imposter syndrome. Um, we just have a venue for us to have an authentic conversation and provide you with some tips for succeeding and overcoming some of those fears. And then part five uh, is leading up to about the week before the application deadline, we're going to have individual student panels for each of our programs. Um, a couple of them have been scheduled. A couple of them are still in TBD, but they will be around uh, the July 8th through 12th timeframe. So keep on the lookout on our virtual open house series landing page. And hopefully one of my colleagues can pop that link into the chat for you. Um, but we will be updating that as those are finalized. But it's a great opportunity to engage directly with current students and get any last minute questions that you have answered before the application deadline. And finally, just want to let you know, as personal as your experiences as a student and afterwards, so is your admissions process. We know that you have individual questions. Um, every single one of you has a different background and probably very different goals. So we work very closely with you in a one-on-one -on -one way to understand what you're hoping to accomplish and then to ensure that we connect you personally with the resources and the information that you need to be able to make the best decision for yourself and your family and your future. So please reach out to us if you haven't already and connect with us at admissions at fielding.edu or at the number here on the screen. With that, again, want to thank you for your time and we want to open it up for any questions that anyone might have.